Well, it's been quite a year here at Just Ride Bikes. The channel is only two years old, but going from strength to strength. Thanks to all your support, liking, subscribing, and commenting on all the videos. So thank you so much. And over the past 12 months, well, I've ridden, reviewed, and tested more products than ever before. Now I've already done a video on the best budget, affordable options in the video linked above and down below. But the products in this video are a bit, shall we say, pricier. So ideal upgrade if you want to add some bling to your bike next year. I put links to all the products down below so you can skip ahead if you want and buy the links down below in the description. I may earn a small affiliate fee if you do click on those links, but it all helps support the channel. And while you're watching, feel free to share the best products you've used by leaving a comment down below. Okay, let's dive in. The best new group set I've used in 2022 was clearly Shimano Ultegra 12 speed. So Shimano launched Dual Race and Ultegra at the same time with 12 speed up from 11, semi wireless, and a bunch of other improvements. But Ultegra always offered better value for money, but yet the same performance at Dual Race. So it was an easy no brainer. I've had it on a Carnago C68 for the past six months, and during that time, it hasn't missed a beat. The performance is great. The shifting is fast and consistent. The group set is reliable. The battery lasts a blimmin' ages. I've had no drama or issues with it at all. I like the new charge port on the rear mech. The Bluetooth integration means you can better use your smartphone to customize all the settings and check your battery life and other things like that. But my biggest favorite feature of the group set are the hoods. I love how ergonomic and how smooth and how good they feel in the hands. The jump from 11 to 12 speed isn't the biggest game changer in the world. You might notice it, you might not, depends on how you ride. You do have smaller cadence steps, but for me, it's not something I really notice too much. Sometimes in certain situations, you do feel the benefits of that 16 2 sprocket on the 11.30 cassette, but it's not a deal breaker really. So for me, it's the ergonomics, the slightly improved braking performance and the faster shifting and that Bluetooth integration with a smartphone app that makes it easier and nicer to live with. And now six months to 12 months have passed since it first launched, the looks of the groups that have really softened on me. And I like the look of the cranks, the rear mech and the shifters as well. And yes, the cranks are still in one piece. They haven't fallen apart yet, but hopefully they never will. I will be doing a more in-depth long-term review of the group set in the new year. So definitely look out for that. While that old Tegra group set was a minor improvement over the old version, it wasn't really a game changer. But what was a potential game changer was the new classified power shift. I had a ride on it back in the summer and I was blown away with the performance and the possibilities offered by a brand new two speed hub gear setup. Yes, hub gears aren't a new thing, but it had been let down by weight and drag in the past. But this power shift had no drag that I could feel and it's very lightweight as well, and could potentially offer all the benefits of one by and two by wrapped up in one package. No front mech, nice clean lines, a bit more aero on a race bike as well, but the extended range of that two speed gear hub system. I've already ridden it briefly, I had about two weeks on it, so definitely I came away impressed, but I know I wanna spend more time on it, and hopefully I can get my hands on a longer term unit for 2023. Put my Fairlight perhaps, or put my giant TCR and do some real long-term testing because I think this is a really exciting product and one that could potentially, I may be getting carried away here, revolutionize road and gravel bikes forever. We've had some interesting lightweight options launched this year, like the MV 2.3 and also the Reval Alpinus CLX two wheels. Now the Revals were definitely a really worthy contender for the lightest wheel of the year. So super lightweight, super shallow carbon fiber construction. And now thanks to the changes they made to carbon fiber design, they are fully tubeless compatible. When I put them on my giant TCR, they gave the bike an amazing immediate response super agile, super responsive, and felt great when climbing and especially out of the saddle. They surge forward in a way that deep area section wheels rarely do. The 1,265 gram weight was definitely a favorite weight. One of the lightest carbon fiber disc brake wheel sets you can currently buy at a reasonable price. 
Still expensive mine. They are cheaper than this MV 2.3s, but the attention to detail on these wheels are very impressive. And if you're not a hookless fan, because I know lots of people aren't, these have a normal bead, so you can run tubeless or tubed with an inner tube if you prefer, keeping both camps happy. If you want a more aero wheel set, but without spending a massive fortune, then the Windspace Hyper 50s are a good pick. And I reviewed them back in the summer and I was generally impressed with how they performed. They cost about a thousand pounds or twelve hundred dollars. They're not the cheapest wheel set in the world, but that one thousand pound price point is a really popular price point, and there are lots and lots of options. But the Windspace definitely have a few features you don't often get at its price point. So they're a 50 mil deep carbon aero rim with carbon fiber spokes, so very spangly and very bling, and the hubs have ceramic bearings. You don't often get ceramic bearings at this price point, so nice detail and definitely a upvote for the wheels. All that and a weight of 1,455 grams, so pretty lightweight, only a few hundred grams heavier than those Raval Alpinus, but getting all the extra aero you get from them. The only downside was the ride quality was a bit harder, but my local roads are pretty rough and probably not the best advert for a carbon fiber deep section wheel, but stay clear of rough roads and these are just fine. For sheer speed though, the new NV SES 6.7 wheels almost literally blew me away. Blimey, these wheels were so, so fast. I put these on my giant TCR Advance and also my Carnago C68 and the speed boost, the jumping speed over a regular carbon wheel set or a shallow alloy wheel set was just phenomenal, just so fast. And where in the past a really deep section rim like these would be compromised in terms of weight and crosswind stability, that really wasn't the case with the wheels. Firstly, very lightweight, just 1500 grams despite that massive deep carbon rim and crosswind stability was pretty good. It definitely held the line better than similar deep wheels in the past that I reviewed. They're also designed around wide tires, so 27 to 28 mil wide tires, which most people these days, especially myself, are using. So they're fantastic. And they are hookless, but I had no issues getting a new tire fitted, whether Conti, GP5000, Envy's own tires, or any other tire I tried. So no problems with installation or maintenance of the tuber tires on these wheels. The other downside is a rather hefty price tag over £3,000, but if you've got deep pockets and you want some super fast wheels, these are hard to beat. There are definitely lots of good tyre options on the market these days, but perhaps my favourite new tyre launched in 2022 was the all new Vittoria Corsa Next. Now this is the company's kind of second tier tire. They still have their cotton corset at the top. But that tire, while it is fantastic when used with inner tubes, wasn't the easiest to set up tubeless or maintain tubeless in my experience. But the new Corsa Next tire is a proper tubeless compatible tire. Works with the modern hookless rims that become very, very popular and really compare well to the best tires in the category. The Continental GP5000 and the Pirelli P0 in my experience. The ride quality was fantastic, rolling resistance very low, and grip in a dry and wet very good too. And durability so far during my time using them has been very impressive indeed. And touch wood, I've not had a single puncture yet. So these aren't the company's fastest, most outright race tyres, but they are designed for the sort of riding that most of us do. We want the performance and speed of a race tyre, but more real world general durability and reliability and puncture protection, which these do offer. The company claims they're on a par with the GP5000 from Continental, but next year I plan to do a big tyre test, so stay tuned for that. Before we carry on any further, this video is sponsored by Shox. Now, riding bikes outside on the open road is a great experience, but sometimes it can be enhanced by listening to your favourite music or podcast. But using headphones outside with other road users probably isn't a sensible idea. But thanks to the bone conduction technology used by Shox headphones, you can enjoy high quality sound without compromising your safety. Comfort is also great because they don't plug into your ears and they stay securely in place, whilst IP55 protection ensures they're good in the rain and against heavy sweat. And with a 10 hour battery life, they're easy to go to distance. Even though this video is sponsored by Shox, 
I genuinely use these on a regular basis. I love having music with me on a long ride, helps the miles fly by much more easily. So if you like the sound and look of these, you can find it more by clicking the link in the description down below. I've been fortunate to test lots of 3D printed saddles over the past two years, and I've become a real fan of the benefits they offer over traditional foam saddles. Much more comfort, you can tune the softness and the firmness in different areas, and it really delivers amazing comfort and way better comfort than any foam saddle in my experience. And a real big difference is towards the end of a long ride where the comfort is maintained compared to the fall off you get on a foam saddle. And my favorite saddle right now is probably the Specialized S-Works Roman Evo Mirror. I do like the power, the short stubby nose version, but I think for me, the Roman Evo works better. That longer nose is great when you're climbing. You really pull yourself onto the rivet to get the power out, and you've got a kicked up tail to push against as well, and nice rounded smooth sides. Comfort really is top level. It's like a saddle just disappears underneath you. No pressure hot spots or soreness, no shuffling around trying to find a more comfy position, and durability has been good so far, although as you can see, becoming slightly polished on the sides from the rubbing. And so far, despite common concerns, I've not seen any extra wear on my bib shorts from using these saddles, and keeping these saddles clean is really easy. The mud just washes out, so not a problem, they don't hold mud at all. If you're in the market for a top-end helmet, you are spoiled for choice, but one of my favorites has become the HJC Ibex 2 helmet. Not the most popular helmet brand just yet, but I think that's set to change in the future. And this is a really good alternative, a good rival for more popular options at this price point. So what I love about this helmet is how lightweight it is for the money. It's super well ventilated, but the best feature is a self-adjusting retention system that works really well and gives a superb fit. No dial to fiddle with, just put it on your head and it adjusts your head size automatically. So a really neat feature. I do like that about this helmet and a real USP over other helmets. And comfort is fantastic. No pressure, no sore points at all. Just disappears on your head thanks to that auto adjusting retention system. Just works really well. Looks good too, comes in a wide range of colors. And while the price is fairly high, it is in line in terms of weight, performance, and specification compared to other helmets in this category. I've waited a long, long time for a Speedplay power meter pedal. And finally, this year, we got them, the brand new Wahoo Powerlink pedals. And I've been really impressed with their performance and durability in the time I've been using them. I've had no issues with inconsistent data, with fluctuations, wonky pedal axles. They've just been rock solid, both on the bike and the power they offer at my head unit. What I really like about these is how I can swap them from one bike to another and always have power on the bike. I love having power on the bike for testing components, wheels, tires, and bikes as well. You always have that reference point. Do you know you're doing 200 watts or 300 watts and how the bike responds and the performance you get back from the bike, the wheels or tires or whatever part you're testing. And these allow me to do that really easily. I am a Speedplay fan anyway, because the biggest thing I love about them is the range of float and how free that float is compared to other systems where you feel more locked in and a bit more limited. Have they helped me get faster? Well, partly. I use them for training for the Fred Witten Sporty back in the spring. And they definitely helped me focus on my climbing efforts for that tough, grueling sportive. So it definitely made a difference. And if you are prepared to unlock the benefits of power meter training, these are an easy way to do it. Not the cheapest in the world, but a really good reliable system. If you like speed play, and you like the fact you can swap them from one bike to another. I love a good saddle pack, as sad and geeky as that perhaps sounds but I've tested hundreds of saddle packs over the years and even the good ones eventually fall apart or let you down. But the Silka Matone has been really impressive. I love the looks of it. It is a good looking saddle pack, it has to be said. I love the attention to detail, but more than anything, it's a durability. It's a saddle pack that has not let me down at all. Waterproof, everything in there stays dry, and it's a really reliable, easy to use device. The Boa Doll isn't a gimmick either, easier to use than Velcro, 
and I swap it from one bike to another on a regular basis and the bird dial is still working really well and you can cinch it down really tight so it doesn't move around underneath your saddle. Nothing worse than a saddle bag swaying underneath your saddle gently in the wind. There's loads of space inside for a chunky multi-tool, a few spare tubes, a CO2 canister if you want, add bits and bobs, loads of space, get it all in there and it's nicely organized and doesn't rattle or make any noise when you're riding along rough roads or gravel. If you've watched the channel for the last two years, you probably know I'm a bit of a fan of tubeless tires. So no inner tubes, but using sealant within the tire to resist punctures. Now, most of the time it works really well and you don't even notice you puncture, fantastic. But sometimes you get a puncture or a hole that a sealant can't plug. And in those occasions, you need a tubeless repair kit. There are quite a few options on the market, but by far and away my favorite is anything from a dime plug and in particular the racer. A really slim, lightweight option that fits in your saddle pack, handlebar bag, wherever it goes, doesn't take up any space at all. And while Dyna Plug are the most expensive option on the market, they are worth it for me. The speed from that pointy bullet means they go in the tire really quickly, no messing, no trying to wiggle that worm in there, go straight in, so it's quick, it's easy, and it's simple. And for me, that makes the price worth it. Some of you might know I bought a VW Transporter van back in January. A long held dream to own a Transporter and it has been fantastic. The bikes go in the back, the dog goes in the back. I use it as a film studio, all my camera equipment, go out filming on location. It's been a really good investment for just ride bikes. And one of the best things I bought for the van has been the bike stow rack that goes in the back. So Bike Stow is a small company in Birmingham. They make these racks to go in the back of vans. They do a two, a three, and a four. I bought the two, and two bikes go side by side in the van with plenty of space for all my other crap that goes in the van. And what I love about it is the fact, well, it's handmade in the UK for a start, so that's a nice detail. It folds flat when you're not using it, and it's made from a solid wood construction with a really simple, easy to use kind of guillotine device that holds the wheel securely in place. Works with road, gravel, and mountain bikes as well. Big e bikes go in there. And it's solid, reliable, easy to use, doesn't cost a fortune for what it is as well, and just what you want if you have a van and you've got bikes in the back. <laughs> 